Hi, I want to show you how to create a forecast in Power BI using Python. Of course, we can utilize the Power BI forecasting feature, which allows us to visually forecast um, the data that we have to a specific day. And as you see here, these are our actuals, they're just page views. We can see there are some peaks in the data, but it looks very seasonal. And you can see that this is a weekly seasonality. But we also see this trend where we see increasing data in the last month. And we want to be able to pick that up in our model. So if we go down here to the Power BI model, you can see that we have a seasonality and we can definitely control that seasonality. So I can click into this. And if I go over to the analysis icon and I hover down to the forecast feature, you can see what I did. I forecasted 30 days out. And then we have a 95% confidence intervals that I didn't have. It was able to predict the seasonality, but you can just add seven because we know it's a weekly seasonality. And if we apply it, nothing's going to change because Power BI does a very good job in picking up that seasonality. The only thing that we're not being able to pick up very well is the actual trend here. So if I turn the trend line on on this visual, you can see there's somewhat of an upward trend going. And we should be able to add that trend into our data, which will influence the forecast. Now, we're able to do that with our Python um, model and you can see that instead of staying flat here we're able to pick up this trend in seasonality and i'm going to walk you through how to do that it's very easy so i'm going to jump over to a jupyter notebook and then i'm going to jump back here and just show you how easy it is to implement the code so what we're doing in our jupyter notebook we're just bringing in the data that we need. We're bringing in pandas, matplotlib, seaborn, which we won't use, but the model we're using is exponential smoothing. Now there are other models we can use that will probably be much more accurate, but they will take a little bit more optimization. Then I'm bringing in seasonal decompose because I want to show you how we can see the seasonality and trend. And then I'm reading our data in using the web forecast here. What I'm doing here is just switching the date. I'm setting my index for my particular data set to date, and I'm calling that data set TS. Then I need to set the frequency of that data set. So we know that we have daily data. So I'm just setting the frequency as D as in day and saving over it. Then if I plot that, you can see exactly what we saw in our Power BI notebook. Now, here's what we can use to get a better idea of the components in our actual trend. So this first line is your actuals. You can see it there. But you can see the trend line here, which we pick up with this seasonal decompose. And we did do a video previously on how to decompose a time series. So you can see here that this is a trend that we need to add to the model. Here's a seasonality that we can add to both Power BI model and the exponential smoothing model. And you can see that here are the residuals or kind of the things that are unexpected in the data. And those would be these particular points here. And you can see as we get down to the end of our data, we can see that there's a lot more events going on there. So with this model, we actually need to train it. So the model is going to train on some data and then we can test the model on some data. We don't need to test this because um, we're just going to use what the model gives us. Now there are 298 days in our data set and I told the model to remember 290 of those days because we don't want to give the data, the model, all of the data because then it can't learn. It's just copying. So we have this training set, which would just be the first 298 days out of that two, the 290 days out of the 298. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our model. So you can see I saved the variable model and then I am using exponential smoothing. I'm passing in that training data set, which is 290 um, days. Now I'm for my trend, I'm using an additive 
And for my seasonality, I'm using multiplicative. And for the seasonal, seasonal periods, I'm using seven. And then I'm fitting that data to the model. Now, what does that additive trend and a multiplicative trend mean? So let me give you an idea of that. So if we look at this visual here, you can see if it's an additive model, it's slowly adding. You can see it slowly adds. And then for a multiplicative model, you can see there's quite a lot that is going on, is exponentially growing. So we can actually add that um, seasonality additive or multiplicative to get a different type of prediction. Now, I played around with it, and usually you might play around with using a multiplicative here and an additive here to get a better idea, but I think we can see from my data it is really growing when it comes to um, the trend. So I thought maybe um, additive, but we can use multiplicative to see what we would get. Um, and then the seasonality here, we can see that it's slightly growing also. So like I said, we can definitely change these. So if I change both of these to additive and I run that particular uh, data, you can see it changes the actual prediction. So if I add multiplicative to our model, so MUL, and run that, so now we have a multiplicative trend, you can see that trend is a little bit bigger. So if we add multiplicative to both, so MUL to trend and seasonality, and this would be you optimizing that model to give you the best result. So once we have this forecast model, we can use it to forecast 30 days in advance. And that's what we're doing here. We're using it to forecast a whole month in advance. And we are doing the same in our Power BI notebook. So you can see if I go back to our Power BI forecast, look at the options, we're just doing that 30 day length. And now I'm gonna show you how I implemented that code very easily within the Power Query. So I'm going to go to Transform Data. Okay. So now that we have that data in what we, in the Power Query Editor, what we have, we have our actuals. And all I did was bring in the data and then added a new category uh, with a custom, category, uh, custom column and use actuals because I want to be able to split between our actuals and forecasts. So now if I go to forecast, you can see it's a much smaller data set. It's that 30 days in the future. And if we look at our Python script, you will see similar information here. I brought in a data set, saved it as DF because it's just easier to write. I've created a date, changed the date to actually a date time, set the index to date, set our frequency to day. Then I brought in our exponential smoothing model from Holtz Winter. I took the first 290 days as my training set. And then I added that data to our model here. So the model is our exponential smoothing model. We add the training data. We're using the uh, trends here. And I think we said we liked multiplicative. So I'm going to change that back to MUL. And then we fit, we gave it the seasonal periods, which would be seven days, which we could see in our data. Then all I did was get a new data frame or table with our forecast. I reset the index and I just made sure they were named date and page view to match what we have in our original data. So I'm just going to hit OK with that. And you can see we are given all the variables within that data. But we'll let the script run for a second. Then if I go down to what we have, we have our predicted values here, and then we have uh, just a custom column, which I have forecast. Now that we have all the same columns, I just appended the two data sets where we have, you know, the actuals and the forecast. Then I'm just gonna close, close and apply this. Hopefully we didn't do anything to damage what we already created. And now you can see that model slightly changed when we got to the multiplicative side of things. 
So we can definitely easily do a forecast and maybe the advantage over the Power BI one is that we can optimize the model a little bit more uh, by changing the, the additive nature of the trend and the seasonality, which we are only given the option for seasonality here. And also we can add those predictions into our actual data set. So I hope that helps you get a little bit better idea of how we can use forecasting. Uh, there's a lot of different models out there, but I kind of wanted to just give you a taste of what we could do. We do have a few videos. Uh, one of the videos I did before on seasonality decomposition, which would be very helpful. And there's a webinar that we have that goes over forecasting. Please ask any questions and I hope that helps. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.